So about a year ago, I was watching the World Championships commentary and I was watching Brady Bot and Gavin Walpert uh, talk about like the future of bridge. And there's a discussion of elite play being played on iPads. And this can help eliminate uh, cheating. It can also keep a great record of the play. And they're discussing potential options here. But I chucked in a comment of like, my dream for this would be that you actually just played with cards, but you had a dealing machine in the middle. And then once you finish your hand, you put it back down in the middle. It then deals the next set. But as it does it, it actually records the play so that you've got a uh, track of that. So... You can imagine that I was super excited when I got sent one of these. This is basically exactly what I was dreaming of. I got sent a couple of these to actually test out. These are Bridge Plus More solutions. I want to go over things like uh, what it costs, uh, what does it sound like, what usability is it, and uh, what suggestions I'd actually have for actually improving it. But I can't believe that this has happened. And like, this is exactly what I was imagining could be the future of bridge. So for this, uh, it's a dealing machine. Uh, it's pretty light. Um, it, you just put the cards in there and it sits in the uh, middle of the uh, table there. It's got uh, sort of uh, north, south, east, west. It would have the board number, stuff like that. And I got a comparison to what a normal dealing machine is just here. Uh, you can see that it's significantly smaller. Um, but what can we actually do by recording the play? So with having record a record of the play, I think this could be like an absolute game changer for this. This will help beginners, intermediates, experts, directors, people teaching, uh, catching cheaters, like everything. It could change so much. So... Beginners and intermediates really struggle to like remember what the play was. So when they're trying to learn, finding out what their mistakes actually were can be really difficult to do because after they finish the hand, they're not gonna remember every single card that got played. And it's really hard to pin down where their mistakes are. I run some lessons where people ask, is there any way that we can actually uh, track what we actually played? Like using pen and paper, I'm like, that's just not gonna work. I'm looking at you here, Arthur. But like this can really, really help intermediates and beginners get access to being able to find their mistakes and actually improve from it. Also, it's great for experts because you can uh, get more data and more analysis of your mistakes. So uh, one of the things that we've got is if you go to FunBridge, uh, websites are starting to develop better and better analysis tools, and this could be used for in-person play. One of the great things about playing online is this record of play, but it loses that social aspect, that, that feel of playing with cards and playing against other people that you just don't get. But being able to check out statistics and see, hey, in my last 200 deals, how many did I declare? How many did I defend? Uh, of the ones I defended, how many did I beat? Uh, what if we break it down into different contracts? Where was I uh, succeeding? Here you can see that my success rate of making one no Trump was 44%. That was like way less than everything else and like way below all other players. And you can compare yourself against uh, everyone or you could compare yourself against uh, world-class players or anything like that. So by using a way that could track the play, you could get this sort of analysis, not only for experts, but for everyone. And you could see where you could actually uh, where you should be improving. And then you could have targeted lessons to say, hey, you aren't great at uh, making your part score, no Trump contracts, great. Let's get you in, let's do lessons on actually how to actually play it. And then you can ramp up your skills for actually going to play that. The other benefit of being able to record the play is that uh, teachers can spot the mistakes as well. Uh, you could have this where the teacher looks up and goes through the hands and spots where your play differentiated from uh, maybe the suggested line or something like that, and they can spot these mistakes really easily. Directors could use this for tracking maybe when a revoke happened. So if people thought that a revoke happened and they called the director but maybe they weren't sure, you could chuck it in. It, checks and it sees where the play actually uh, went wrong or not. Uh, but also you can use this for sort of anti-cheat and spotting abnormalities. When the cheating scandal happened, like uh, in 2015, one of the things that happened was they did data analysis on how good people were at leading. 
Leading is an intrinsically tough thing to do. And the people that were cheating were like a step above all the other world-class players. Now, by keeping a record of play, you could spot abnormalities like this where maybe people underlead aces or people find the correct lead too often or all kinds of things. They'd be able to track this and you could sort through this rather than just finding a competition where it was on view graph and actually recorded play by someone literally watching the table and clicking through the cards. It would make this sort of thing so much easier. I imagine like a, a world where people are playing with these in the clubs and what they're doing is they're playing a set of boards that was actually from a world championship. And then as it records the play, what happens is that it's like, hey, everyone at the table played at a world-class level and like streamers go off and everything like that. There would be like so many cool things that you could do just by having a record of the player. Like, I think this would be a fundamental shift to how people actually can play bridge and learn and develop if this became a norm. But that's not the only feature of uh, the bridge plus more. So I want to look at some of the other things. So uh, other features that it's got is it's got a large database of hands. So teachers can easily store their hands um, so that they don't actually need to carry around a set of boards. So uh, if you were teaching, um, say, a lesson on stamen or transfers, you might want to deal a whole set of boards. So here's a look at what the um, dealing the Bridge Plus More solution looks like compared to just a set of 27 boards. If you were, like, traveling around and doing lessons, this is way easier to uh, take than... Uh, a whole set of boards. But also, let's say your students changed your mind and say, hey, uh, actually, we really struggled with splinters this week and we wanted to take a look at that. And you go, great, cool, we can just change that and you can do that on the fly. But there's a massive database of hands as well. Uh, so um, not only for teaching, as but uh, they've got lots of the world championships and everything that was on ViewGraph, they, they've recorded that and you can pull those hands out. So you can play these hands from world championships uh, really easily. Uh, another perk of this is that uh, basically it will reduce your cost of board dealing. If there's a large club, uh, hiring a board dealer is actually rather costly. So it takes away that. But uh, there are some negatives to this as well, so let's uh, look at what those are. So one of them is that they use specialized cards. The, the cards look normal, so uh, <laughs> that was my green screen making them disappear. Um, but yeah, the, the cards are normal cards. Um, I'll bring up a picture here so that you can actually see them. Um, they do have like a little code in them or something so that the machine can spot the card easier. I, for the life of me, can't see this at all. They look totally normal, they feel normal. Uh, but what this means with specialized cards is that like, let's say you damage a pack, you'd need to get the said pack from uh, from Bridge Plus More or their uh, card producer. Normal packs of cards wouldn't happen. And I feel like in large clubs, you'd need like a, quite a quantity of this because if you see what people do to cards, you're like, we need to change these over uh, often. Um, the other thing is the machines occasionally have errors. They're usually pretty easy to fix. So here's an example. It comes up at sort of uh, spots there. As you can see, it doesn't take long to fix, but uh, there would be a little bit of a learning curve teaching people like, hey, uh, here, if an error comes, this is what you can actually do. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is pricing. So for these, each machine is like a basic one or a premium one. Uh, these are in pounds, uh, but like 400 pounds for a machine. Um, they also use like tablets to connect with them. I worked out that you can also use it on a phone. Um, so maybe in the future, that's where it'd go. Uh, but you'd have a tablet uh, and you'd be using that to connect to the, to the machine. And uh, they also have a subscription fee with on top of that. And uh, what that is depends, are you like um, just a teacher or are you a popular club? So it's like 22 pounds for every three months. So not much, uh, but I uh, did want to touch on, there is a subscription here. Some people aren't big fans of that, uh, but uh, what they are is they are building their databases. They're also trying to build some more apps that actually uh, connect into it. So it's not just like one and done and you get it. So they also use tablets. Uh, basically at a table, you'd have a tablet. And for this, uh, you could 
Uh, when you're playing, you can choose how much data you want to enter in. Um, so it'll record the play just by dealing the, the cards through it again. Uh, but um, the tablet can, you can have it say, okay, yep, we want to put in the bidding. So you could just enter in the bidding or you could just enter in the final contract. Uh, this is kind of similar to like bridge mates or other things like that, um, that it uses, but it does connect directly uh, with those. Um, so there's some of the things that like, I don't know how it will change in the future. Is this idea what, what needs to be? But I wanted to highlight some of them. None of those negatives are like deal breakers for me uh, are that, that bad. Um, one of the things about uh, what you can do with this is the app that they've got has a lot of functionality in it. So you can say like, hey, I want it to eject the cards uh, right as um, people pull it out or like, sorry, right as people put in the next deck of cards, or maybe you want to press a button and that's when the cards get ejected. Um, you can tell it which board numbers to, to deal. You, you can change lots and lots of things. There is so much that you can uh, mess around and deal with in, in the app. But what I would like to see them do is uh, I'd want them to hire like a graphic designer or a user uh, user interface de designer. Um, largely, I want them to like idiot proof this. There's heaps of functionality and I reckon that's cool, uh, but I want them to make it sort of streamlined that you can just go through and it's really easy for anyone just to pick it up and know what they can actually do. And then if they want to do all the uh, like trickier things, get in and actually do that. So is this the future of Bridge? I reckon this definitely has a place and I would really love to see like what people can do once they get access to it and uh, familiarize themselves with being able to record the play and then look at it and then maybe you can people share hands. I reckon there'll be so many cool things uh, that they can do. So there's the Bridge Plus More solution. I was uh, really happy with it. Um, there's still some improvements uh, left to go, but I was super excited when I saw it and I hope you uh, enjoyed taking a look at this. Thanks all for watching.